After all of Jay's warnings about the substance's corrosive qualities, Neil had decided to treat the sample like a biocontaminant. The protocols in place for dealing with potentially hazardous chemicals were essentially the same as with hazardous biological contaminants. The difference? Neil's team more positively pressured suits. The oxygen hoses attached to their backs made movement awkward, and Bill had more than once nearly pulled his out of the ceiling. Neil just hoped Bill remembered their biohazard training. Bill was stooped over a stainless steel table with a syringe. Because they only had the underside of the metal lid to work with, they'd suck up what they could into a Pyrex syringe and then create an emulsion with water. If it reacted to the water, then they'd have to try something else. Okay, here we go, Bill said. Neil watched his colleague touch the thin metal needle to the jet black film on the lid. With his free hand, he pulled back the plunger. The metal needle squealed against the lid. Neil was afraid it would snap, but it held. As Bill's fingers pulled the plunger further back, obsidian liquid entered the glass enclosure. Got it, Bill said. Neil hissed through his teeth. Not much, but enough. Bill held the syringe upside down, the needle pointing toward the ceiling. You ready to create an emulsion? Neil nodded. He'd already put out the glass dish used for the SEM and coated it with water. Just make sure you don't put too much of that crap in there. Bill chuckled. Wouldn't worry about that. It's not like there's much M2 in the syringe. He placed the needle into the shallow water and slowly pushed the plunger. A viscous black drop oozed out of the needle and into the dish. Neil watched as the drop floated atop the water. When there was no reaction, he blew a sigh through his teeth. Okay, so far so good. Bill clapped him on the back. Told you, nothing to worry about. Whatever, man. If Jay's not on crack, that shit eats plastic. If it eats plastic, there's no telling what else it will dissolve. Neil glared at his partner. Take this seriously. Bill raised his hands. The syringe pointed at the ceiling. Okay, okay. Good. Neil lifted the glass dish in his gloved hands and turned to the scanning electron microscope. The sampling case, a large cube of beige-painted metal, sat on a table next to the actual microscope. Neil touched a button on the side and the sample case split in the center. The front moved silently forward. He placed the glass dish in the sample case, made sure it was snug, and then pressed the button again. The sample case shut with a barely audible click. A green LED started to glow on the side of the case. Neil walked to the keyboard and display next to the SEM. He touched the screen and it came to life. By tapping and sliding his fingers, he quickly went through the various screens to set up the sample. He labeled it m 2 emul one The screen flashed and a dialog box appeared. Neil glanced at Bill. We ready? Bill grinned behind his faceplate. Should I get the fire extinguisher? Neil rolled his eyes, shook his head, and stabbed the green run button. The SEM motors were to life. The word scanning blinked on the screen. Two tests. There were only two tests he and Kate could think of. NMR and light fluoroscopy. At least while the NMR was running, they could get the fluoroscopy test prepped and see what kind of funky colors him two gave off. But first, they had to get the distillation tank washed as well as the other glassware. Between her, Marie, and Jay, the lab was usually spotless after every test. But she had to admit that Marie was the OCD member of the trio. Any speck or stain was enough to drive her into a whirlwind of frenetic action, provided, of course, she wasn't watching, prepping, or analyzing an experiment. And instead of helping Jay and Kate, Marie was possibly dying somewhere in an ER. Her lip quivered. Kate took a deep breath and suddenly wished she could take off her helmet and wipe away the tear squeezing from her eye. You okay? Jay asked. Kate's voice came out in a croak. Yes. Jay had gathered all the equipment that had been in contact with the M2. A pile of the stuff sat beside the chemical sink. He picked up the tray they'd used for the inspection of the boiled M2 and then stopped. Um, Kate? 
She broke out of her fugue and walked to the sink. What is it now? Jay stepped back from the sink. I think we may have a problem. She stood next to him and followed his gaze. A beaker sat in the sink. It was completely clean. But that's not what Jay was staring at. The sink was made of stainless steel, but it was nicked and marked by years of abuse from toluene and other cleaning fluids. The metal was dull and in need of a good polish, except for the amorphous shape leading from the beaker to the drain. What the hell did that? She asked, already knowing the answer. Jay cleared his throat. You think maybe Marie poured him too into the sink before we went on break the first time? Did she? Sounded like something she would do. Kate tried to remember, but it seemed like that it happened a thousand years ago. I, um, don't know, Jay. He pointed at the shape. I've seen that before. He shivered and his breath huffed into the mic. Kate scrunched her eyebrows. Where? Jay gulped. In the secure area, where I found the lid. He turned to her. His eyes twinkled with manic energy. There was a tiny drop of M2 on the shelf. I tried to scoop it up using some plastic, but it melted it. Right, you told me that. What I didn't tell you, Jay said, is that when I turned back to get the lid, the drop seemed a little bigger, and I think it moved. Moved? Another shiver dripped down her spine. How could it move? He shrugged. I said it seemed to. I don't know that it did. But there was a, well, a polished shape next to it, like it had eaten through all the shit staining the steel. Kate slowly turned and stared back down into the sink. There was no sign of any M2, but she could see her own reflection in the shining area of metal. I don't get it, she said at last. They bring this shit up from below the ocean floor and it looks like oil, but it's obviously not. She looked at the equipment piled next to the sink. She frowned. Jay? Yeah? Her face paled. Um, where's the M2? He cocked an eyebrow. What do you mean? She gestured to the various instruments. I don't see any traces of the oil. None. He clucked his tongue. His faceplate fogged. Maybe it slid out like it did when we put it in the waist. It all moves together or not at all. Huh? She asked. Jay rolled his eyes. What I mean is that the stuff sort of, well, attracts itself. The molecules must bond in some way, like glycerin. It moves like a liquid, acts like a liquid, but has some kind of, I don't know, magnetism to itself? She thought for a moment. So that's why it wouldn't come out of the beaker easily when you put it into the waste? He nodded. I think so. Biting her lip, she stared back into the sink. We need to drench this with toluene, now. Right, Jay said. Breaks up normal heavy hydrocarbons. Might work on this shit too. We hope. Jay leaned forward and turned on the tap marked with a T. If not for the faceplate and hood, their noses would have burned from the gasoline-like stench of the liquid. Toluene, in conjunction with other solvents, poured out of the faucet and bathed the sink. More importantly, they went down the drain and into a waste tank. Although the solvents could destroy small amounts of hydrocarbons, it wasn't enough to handle large quantities. Neither chemist heard the sizzling sound as the chemicals streamed into the drain. They quickly washed and drained the Pyrex and instruments. When they'd finally exhausted the pile, except for the tray containing the boiled black, they glanced at one another. What do we do with the solids? Jay asked. Solids. Face change. Kate thought for a moment and then grinned. We can perform an experiment. Experiment? What kind of experiment? Jay asked. How much M2 do we have left? Kate pointed to the spigot. He shrugged. Probably somewhere around 12 liters. Why? She clasped her hands at her waist. We have M2 in solid. We have M2 in liquid. Uh, I already don't like where this is going, he said. I don't want any more shit out of the barrel than necessary. Agreed, Kate said. But follow my logic. We clean the tray with toluene and see how it reacts. If it does, then we take a sample of the liquid and try the same. Jay licked his lips. 
You want to experiment on this crap when we don't even know what it does? Science hates cowards, she said. And hell loves fools. Jay clucked his tongue and then nodded. Okay, so how do you want to do this? Let's take a small sample of the solid, put it in a clean beaker, and then pour the solvent into it. The terror, fear, and worry she'd felt earlier was gone. Instead, her stomach churned with excitement. After that, we set up the fluoroscopy and NMR tests. And while they're running, she pointed at the sample spigot on the wall, we do the same test with the pure M2. Jay stared up at the ceiling. For a moment, she was certain he was going to say no and call her crazy. When he finally smiled, his eyes were more manic than ever. Brilliance. That's all I can say. Sheer, unadulterated brilliance. The words came out as wily coyote. Then let's do this, Kate said. He grasped the edge of the tray and placed it in the sink. The corner of the metal clanged. The remains of the hook section crumbled. Kate and Jay exchanged a glance. Fragile? No shit, Kate said. Turn on the tap and stand the hell back. Jay nodded to her, took in a deep breath and turned the tap. The solvent solution rushed out of the faucet and consumed the remains of the boiled M2. When the toluene covered the layers of sediment, Jay killed the solvent flow and stepped back. Kate sucked in a breath as the lab filled with the sound of frying bacon. A cloud of steam rose from the sink as the toluene dissolved the particles. The sizzling sound faded and then disappeared. The vapor dissipated. They exchanged another look and then Kate peered over the sink's edge. The tray was empty, save for the toluene. There was no sign of the M2 solids. Kate frowned. What the hell? Jay joined her, looked in the sink, and then chuckled. Well, that's not what I expected. It catalyzed it. He nodded. Or something akin to that. But there should still be some remnant of it. Not if it dissolved. I mean, she licked her lips. That cloud of steam? That was heat, Jay. It reacted pretty violently. That worries me, he said. If it reacted that way to uh, the boiled M2, what's the liquid going to do? She sighed. Good question. I think we need to answer it, but first I want to set up the other tests. Okay, Jay said. He looked up at the clock on the wall. Jesus, it's late. Kate nodded. Yes, it is, and we haven't had a break in a long time. Do you want to take one? He shook his head. No, we can have the samples ready for testing pretty fast. Once the NMR starts, we'll have time. Plus, the fluoroscopy shouldn't take long. The NMR won't require any supervision. We can get some coffee or take a nap. I'll set up the NMR to alert us when it's ready. Fair enough, she said. Then let's get it done. I need a nap. The comfy chair wasn't so comfortable anymore. Ever since Darren had left with Marie and the ambulance, his stomach had been turning cartwheels. Mike's eyes were closed, but all he kept seeing in his head were flashing lights. He had to call Simpson. He had to call him and tell him that Hal couldn't possibly get the analysis done in time. They were down a chemist, and he no doubt Jay and Kate were less than focused on the task at hand. And he had to admit he didn't blame them. From what Darren said, she probably wouldn't survive the night. Darren, normally unflappable and always in control, had barely been capable of coherent speech. Whatever had infected Marie had put her into some kind of coma. Darren said he'd seen blood on the sheets in the mother's room. After getting off the phone with Darren and Kate, he'd looked up the symptoms for hemorrhagic fever and dozens of other nasty illnesses. None had the rapid incubation time this had shown. Whatever had infected her was faster than anything he could find on the web. What the hell did your people do, Simpson? What the hell did you bring up? The phone buzzed. Mike opened his eyes and stared at the LCD caller ID strip. The word unknown blinked at him. He didn't want to answer it, but he had to. It could be Darren calling from the hospital, or the hospital itself. It buzzed again. Mike let out a sigh and leaned forward in his chair. The leather creaked on well-worn springs. He lifted the plastic receiver and strangled the buzzing sound. Mike Beaudry, he said into the phone. There was a pause. Mr. Beaudry, this is Dr. Hutchins from the Houston Center for Disease Control. He sat rigid in the chair. Okay, can I help you? 
We haven't confirmed it yet, but we believe your facility is the origin point for an extremely hazardous biocontaminant. Mike closed his eyes. What kind? Pause. We don't know. We are continuing to treat your employee, Ms. Marie Krieger, and would appreciate your cooperation in the meantime. What do you mean, cooperation? Mike's skin prickled. The CDC is sending a team to inspect your lab. We ask that you allow no one in or out of the facility until we have time to investigate the pathogen, as well as ensure no one else from HAL has been infected. Do you understand? No one in or out. You're putting us under quarantine. It wasn't a question. Yes, sir, that is correct. Mike tapped his finger on the desk. Dr. Hutchins, how do I know all this is on the up and up? How do I know you are who you say you are? Another pause. Mr. Beaudry, do you have access to a computer? Yes. Then look up the number for the CDC. Call it. Ask to be transferred to Houston and ask for me. Until then, please allow no one in or out of the facility. Our team should be there in the next 20 minutes. Mike nodded. The acid in his stomach boiled over into his throat. He loosed a bile-tasting belch and sighed. Okay, Dr. Hutchins. I'll put the facility in lockdown. Expect a call from me shortly to verify your identity. Thank you, Mr. Beltry. Please alert your staff to stay clear of the, uh, barrel of oil. It is vitally important they do not come into contact. Mike nodded. I will, Dr. Hutchins. I'll call you in a few moments. I look forward to it. The line went dead. The SEM whined as it continued to scan. Neil sat in front of the monitor and watched as the computer generated a picture line by line. With each passing nanosecond, the SEM bombarded the sample with lines of electrons. The optics registered the brief illumination of the sample and translated them into high-definition pixels. With the sample safely in the SEM, they decided to take off their suits. Until they had to manually handle M2, there was little point in getting hot and sweaty and wasting any more of the lab's O2 supply. Neil tapped his fingers on the table's edge. Bill? He swiveled in his chair and stared across the room. Bill was at his own computer, no doubt watching porn. Bill! The biochemist groaned and then turned around. What do you want? The scan done yet? Um, no, Neil said. And that's the problem. Come here. Bill loosed an epic sigh and rose from his chair. The crackle of old bones echoed in the lab as he flexed his knees. Too old for this shit. Right, Neil chuckled. Stop bitching and take a look at this. Okay, okay. Bill walked until he was behind Neil. What the? He pulled his glasses from the front of his lab coat and put them on. His bushy, gray eyebrows scrunched together. That's not right, Neil hissed through his teeth. No shit. The screen's edges were filled with gray. The water molecules were clearly visible. That was until the computer started to render the center of the emulsion. The screen should have been displaying molecules of M2. Instead, black. Nothing but black. Neil smacked the table's edge. So what the hell does it mean? Bill shrugged. No clue. I'll have to go look at the operating manual. But I've never even heard of something like this. Neil nodded. Maybe what we should, the phone on the wall buzzed. The two men exchanged a glance. Bill sighed again and walked to it. He caught it on the third ring. Lab, this is Bill. Neil watched the man's displeased frown disintegrate into confusion. Okay, Mike. He stabbed a button on the phone and the intercom went live. You there? Neil? The head of the bio lab looked up at the speaker on the wall. Yeah, Mike, what's up? We have a bit of a problem. Marie was infected by something in the chem lab, or rather may have been. Jay told us, Neil said. She doing any better? There was a pause. He and Bill exchanged a glance. Mike? Neil asked. I don't have an exact status on her condition, but from what the CDC said, I don't think so. Shit, Bill said. Shit is right, Mike continued. Jay said you two are running tests on the PPE sample. That's correct, but then stop. Now. The CDC has asked we quarantine anyone who has been exposed to the PPE sample. They're afraid the contagion will spread. 
Bill and Neil exchanged another glance. Neil cleared his throat. Okay, we'll um, leave it where it is. Not much luck anyway. Good. One more thing. You have to stay in the lab. Bill frowned. What? What do you mean, stay in the lab? We've been in here for... The CDC is sending in a team. They want to make sure the labs are kept in lockdown and any and all staff that have been exposed remain there. Neil shook his head. Mike, we've got nothing down here. No restrooms, no water, no food. Look, Neil, they'll be here soon. If they find us breaking quarantine, it might get a lot worse. Stay put. Please. It was the please that struck Neil. Mike sounded scared. Neil turned to the finished SEM picture. The sample was black. No other color. No other details. Just black. Okay, Mike. Understood. And we'll stay away from this shit. Good. I'll give you an update as soon as I get one. Stay safe. The speaker squawked and then buzzed with the sound of a dead line. Bill turned off the speakerphone. The lab descended into silence, save for the gentle, nearly inaudible whoosh of the AC. Neil chewed his lip. Now what do we do? I don't know, but... Bill broke off. His eyes stared at the glass wall separating the bio lab from the chem lab. Color drained from his face. He raised a gnarled finger. What? Bill didn't answer, but his body started to shake. Neil rose from his chair and looked into the other lab. His blood turned cold. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is that? <laughs>